uh, from the professional staff of GPAR. Uh, reporting to you from uh, GPAR World Headquarters. Uh, I walked into the office this morning. Um, I still have, I'm not wearing an ascot. Um, <laughs> try to make a little joke this morning now as I had my mask. Um, but uh, we wake up this morning and this is a different kind of coffee talk. Uh, as we were just talking about, there's a lot of pain and hurt in our city this morning. Um, it's going to take some time to heal. Um, and this association can play a role in that. Um, we have great leadership. We have great people who are very involved in our association, but not just our association. They care about this city. I'm a Philly kid, Olney, Longcrest, Fox Chase, now closer to Center City. Um, I love this city and I'm going to do with the rest of our professional staff, whatever we can to play our role in helping to make Philadelphia stronger, better, heal. We have a, we have a role in this and um, we'll find our way to help out and we'll take the cues from our leadership. Professional staff will be committed. We'll do whatever it takes um, to do our part uh, to make Philadelphia stronger, better, healthier. Um, and with that, I will turn this over to our president, Stephanie Biello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Senator. I think you're on. Are you, I saw your good morning. Yes, I am. Are we live? Hello, how are you? I'm well, sorry about that, guys. My foot, my, I think my computer is, is beginning to get all zoomed out after the last two and a half months. I apologize. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Can't get the thing At to least work, the video to work. Yeah, you never know with Zoom. Sometimes it works. Luckily, we've been okay. So it's working today. So, well, welcome to our GPAR Coffee Talk. Um, you know, last week when Matt and I were talking about, you know, some of the questions we wanted to, you know, speak with you about and it kind of changed over the weekend um, and I'm sure your plate is extremely full. Um, but before we get into that, can we just get a little bit, just so you can introduce, introduce yourself to our GPAR members and just talk a little bit about yourself, your background, um, where your concentration is, um, where, where your office is, that sort sure. of thing. Sure. Um, I was elected to the state Senate 2009. Uh, I um, quickly uh, started off my career in the Senate as a member of the Senate Appropriations Committee, which is actually very unusual. I was one of the first freshmen ever to get a place on the Appropriations Committee. I spent the first um, seven years, eight years, on the Appropriations Committee before I ran for a, um, a leadership spot. Um, I ran against a current leader on the leadership spot and took them out um, in 2014 and became a member of the leadership team. Uh, and then last January, I was appointed uh, the chairman of the Senate Judiciary uh, Committee, which I would think along with the, um, along with appropriations is probably one of the most um, significant committees um, in the uh, in the uh, in the state. Um, I also sit on the professional licensure um, committee as well too, with Senator Boscola, chaired by uh, Senator Boscola. Um, you know, we what a lot of my concentration, of course, um, is on development, specifically economic development in my district. I brought back um, the most uh, resources of anyone in, in the Pennsylvania legislature over a billion dollars back to my district in the time that I've been there. Um, and significant, certainly um, a lot of um, resources for uh, development throughout my, uh, throughout my, my district. As you know, it's a, it's a, it's a district where, um, you know, I would say that the, the, you know, the, the engine, the, the business engine of this state runs directly through my district, uh, whether it be the ports, which are in it, uh, both all the ports, um, the stadiums, South Philadelphia, uh, the business district, and of course, much of our, um, much of our, um, I guess, uh, areas in the city that are for um, uh, visiting and, and other types of uh, uh, recreational activities. I think everything sort of takes place within the, uh, within the first and the 12th district. So it's a very, uh, it's a very rich district um, with many, many assets, both natural uh, and of course, what we have in, in terms of what, what is there. So it's a, um, it's a very busy district and it keeps me, uh, it keeps my staff and I pretty district. And in addition to that, we have both, we have both casino licenses. So we've got, uh, um, 
and uh, we also have the, the most liquor licenses of any place in the entire state of Pennsylvania, concentrated in my, in my senatorial district. So there's a lot going on there in that district. That's just a little bit of a background. Well, thank you for that. So let's talk about um, economic, um, you know, fundamentals of real estate. If there's economic growth, there's purchasing power. If there's purchasing power, people are buying real estate, right? So prior to this weekend, you know, businesses were um, starting, we were going to open up, we were going to get started again, um, you know, on a limited basis. And I think we were all optimistic, um, you know, about moving forward. In light of what's going on this weekend um, and today, what, I'm sure your plate is full. What is, um, what's going on on the state level? How are they looking at Philadelphia? Um, you know, obviously we have the National Guard here. So um, do you wanna give us a little update on what's going on on the state level? I mean, I think that the, um, look, what, what happened this week, I think is just, it's, it's just tragic from so many different, yeah. um, from so many different standpoints. Some of the things that you touched upon um, are really, they really hit home. Many of our businesses, as you know, we are what, a couple of days away from um, hopefully moving from, the, from red to yellow. Uh, these businesses were likely getting ready to go, likely many of them were, were looking at uh, the possibility of opening at least on a limited basis. So what happened this weekend, um, you know, we don't have a full assessment yet. I, I still have not an opportunity to meet with all of our our, our business owners, I was actually doing it on a pretty regular basis. Um, and so we really haven't had an opportunity to just sit down and, and talk with the community other than what I've seen on the street when I was out there yesterday with folks. Um, but uh, that is just tragic, the fact that we that some of them are so close to opening up and now that they're, they just don't know what this is going to do to their timetable, but they're not going to be opening up on Thursday, which is a significant blow to the city. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that, you know, the, the, there's no way that we move forward uh, as a city without um, our economic development pieces in place. And of course, you know, public transportation is critically important. Um, you know, we are convening. We've had a conversation with the, uh, with the governor yesterday afternoon and his staff um, to determine exactly what the, uh, the situation is here. And that was when the request was made for the National Guard to come in. Um, the Philadelphia Police Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Outlaw, made that known that she had made that request and wanted the, the, the National Guard here. Um, and we have a briefing later on the, the, this morning with the, uh, uh, with the governor's office. So right now, things are just, um, you know, we're just trying to get the, uh, the National Guard in place and to, uh, to give the police department um, an opportunity to um, you know, establish themselves. Because right now, they are they are camped out, and I know that the, the, the councilman knows this as well. They're they're camped out at the um, at the services buildings because they can't afford to lose that. And, and there's no the, the 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 truth is is that there's not enough police right now to to cover other areas in the city where there's where the, the looting is taking place, and it's it's um it's just a very very tragic situation right now. We're trying to get our uh, our arms around it. Um, it's um, it's just you know I, I walk down my my neighborhood here where I live. And you know, I'm an elected official, but I'm also a neighbor here. And I'll tell you, Saturday night was just, uh, I thought I saw it all with, with, with this pandemic, but it's just very, you know, I just really sort of can't describe what I felt, you know, on that night. It was extremely, I was, you know, it was very hard. And uh, I just don't, you know, we were trying to sort of get an understanding of where, what the next steps are. And hopefully in a few hours, we'll, we'll have us a little bit more, a little bit more direction but it's unprecedented right now. You know, if I have this happen in the middle of a pandemic where we're still, we haven't even moved out of the, the, the red yet, um, you know, it's, it's just a, a very, very difficult situation. Okay, so uh, Senator Farnese, this is Matt Braden from GPAR staff. Uh, Stephanie yeah. just sent me a text that she's having some technical difficulties. So Zoom is having a really hard June 1st, apparently. Uh, so uh, I guess it's par for the course. So I'm going to throw in some questions to you. And then yeah. when Stephanie gets um, her technology squared away, she'll jump back on in. So uh, we'll just go with the flow. Um, so how has your staff been functioning during the course of this pandemic? Um, we know that 
uh, on the local level and on the state level, there's been a whole host of different challenges because um, sometimes the technology isn't always, um, say, uh, what it is elsewhere. Um, how, how has your team been handling its work um, since the pandemic hit? Well, as usual down there in, in South Philadelphia, um, you know, you've got, you've got two, two very amazing staffs, um, myself and uh, uh, Councilman Squilla. And so we, you know, we've had, to be honest with you, Matt, I've had people in my office from day one. Uh, Dominic Spermilia or Justin Whitmore have been in my office. We've, we've served, we've barely had contact with over 125,000 constituents during that period of time. I've done six town halls. I've did four um, meetings with industry members, uh, food and beverage, um, all different parts of uh, all different parts of the uh, the industries in my district, um, and uh, we've probably serviced. We've actually had somebody on uh, part of the unemployment compensation staff from our um, caucus. We actually embedded someone there because we figured when this started that there would be a significant increase in unemployment compensation claims, as you know, there was. Um, and so we were able to offer folks um, service directly with, uh, with someone in the department. Um, we then worked with the governor uh, to transfer 500 people from the Department of Labor onto unemployment and then worked with them to bring back 100 folks that have been previously employees there to sort of increase their, their numbers as well. Um, but we've actually had people in that office almost on a daily basis, Matt, since the pandemic started, um, either working right from my office there, working remotely, or a combination of both. Have you had to go out to Harrisburg much? Yeah, I was out in Harrisburg. Uh, we was, I was at Harrisburg in the beginning, um, uh, the first couple of weeks of the pandemic in order to, since I'm a member of the leadership team, we had to go out and, and literally uh, draft and pass the uh, unprecedented uh, legis legislation to allow us to, re to, uh, to vote remotely. And so we implemented that, those bills. And, um, and then we basically told our members to stay at home. Um, we, have, we had serious concerns about um, being, you know, being in Harrisburg, specifically during the pandemic. And then towards the last couple of weeks when the Republicans sort of you know, began to open things up, we still decided to stay um, you know, to stay, uh, stay the course, follow the guidelines. And then of course the outbreak last week in the, in the house, um, I think was really, was really tragic. So, um, you know, we have been operating remotely. Uh, we've been, you know, we've been having session, of course, last week we passed, uh, you know, we passed the, uh, the five month stopgap budget that, um, we hope we'll be able to, uh, come back in the fall. Um, and readdress it specifically those education pieces and the long, the, the distance learning is something we'll have to go back again to, to take a look at and see where we are um, in September, whether kids are going to be able to go back to the school or not, or have to continue with the, um, the long distance. So we've been, you know, my office has really been, um, you know, doing what we have to do, which is governing. You know, I was in sort of campaign mode and then we sort of, everything stopped in, in middle of March and, and we really, you know, focused on, on, um, on governing through this pandemic. And we, I think my office has done a great job. I have a great staff. So speaking of the campaign, um, you've, you've run for office before, obviously. Yep. Uh, this has probably been a campaign unlike any other campaign. Um, how is it different and how you've been trying to run a campaign when you can't necessarily go to see this community meeting or go to this house of worship or, you know, how all the, the normal ways in which you get out to your various constituents to um, yeah. so, you know, answer was, the questions and stuff. Yeah, it's been a, it's been, a, it has been a, um, it has been a very uh, unique situation for all of us that are, that are in the middle of this. Um, and, um, you know, I think that the first, you know, as soon as the pandemic broke, like I said, you know, the, the, uh, one of the, the most significant pieces was a door knocking. When I got into this race, or months before preparing for this race, I knew, uh, I knew who my opponent was most likely going to be, and I knew what their strength was. So I began to literally build from the ground up a, um, a basically a canvassing operation that I could compete with that of my opponent, which would be reclaimed. Um, I knew that they, you know, they had a, a lot of uh, experience with canvassing, organizing, and so we sort of built an effort to be able to compete with them on the ground. And then, um, you know, I knew that I would have to, you know, raise the resources to communicate both through mail 
and through TV. When the pandemic hit, um, I, I was able to pivot very, very sort of very seamlessly onto phone banking pieces. And, uh, and at that point, our, our, our mail program was ready to kick in on our TV. So, you know, the, the thing about the, um, the Zoom, the Zoom calls actually allowed me to stay in contact and do a lot of my, quote, town hall kind of meetings with, uh, through Zoom. Um, and I did a couple of debates, uh, actually, on Zoom, the debate uh, with Center City Residents Association and uh, one, uh, another one last week for um, QVNA and, and Bella Vista. So, you know, we've been able to use, um, use the Zoom uh, to be able to, to do a lot of our, um, our, I guess, our contact and that we would not have been able to, would have been able to do in large groups. So it's been different, um, you know, but we've been able to sort of pivot. Yeah, I think it's the main name of the game now, pivot, yeah. adjust. Um, yeah. So during this uh, situation, what has your contact been with both Mayor Kenny and Governor Wolf? Um, how, do, how does your position interplay with them? How have you guys uh, worked together? Um, what is the nature of that relationship and how has that operated over the last uh, two and a half, three months or so? Well, I mean, we've always, you know, because I'm a member of the leadership team, I, we interact with, uh, with the governor's office and the governor quite often. Uh, you know, I had, we, before the pandemic hit, you know, we um, played a, a huge role in a lot of the governor's um, budgetary, uh, budgetary announcements, specifically towards the uh, remediation of the schools um, and putting, putting uh, development dollars, um, actually allowing developers to draw down from our cap money, which is a first that's never been able to, we've never actually had that in Pennsylvania. Um, I got the governor to agree to do that and put a billion dollars aside um, to help remediate, sort of take the burden off uh, the school district as well too. Um, and so, but during this pandemic, we've been having weekly meetings with, uh, Zoom meetings with the governor's staff, um, the governor, we had a caucus with the governor a couple of weeks ago, and we would meet routinely with, uh, uh, with Secretary Levin, and my work with um, in, on the judiciary uh, required me to have meetings also with uh, Secretary Wetzel from uh, the prisons as well. So we've been, you know, we're in constant contact with the governor's office almost literally on a on a daily basis, if not we, uh, three, four times a week. Okay. So Stephanie, are you ready to jump back in? How is your technology working out there? And. You know what? I keep going in and out, and the and it says my internet is very unstable right now. So I apologize for that. Um, so I heard you talk a little bit about how your office is functioning, you know, through through the whole pandemic and everything, and working um, from home. And maybe you talked about this, and I apologize. But do you see anything going forward? Um, you know, um, technology wise, you know. Um, you know, you had some some meetings, some votes virtual. Do you see that in the future at all? I mean, I, I think that for the immediate future, in terms of um, with uh, with meeting either later this week or, or or next week, I think those meetings will continue to be um, Zoom meetings, specifically until we get a, a, an understanding of what the what if any uh, further contact and spread there was up up last week. Um, in the in the house, we have to get an understanding of what the um, you know if there is any other exposures up there. So I know many house members are very concerned about uh, about what happened there. Um, but I think moving forward, I think as soon as uh, I think as soon as the majority of the states right now, the counties are right now are in yellow. I think that we'll resume um, regular session if not in, in June when we return again um, in, a, in a month in July or August. But I do anticipate that regular session will will recommence again as soon as it's as soon as we're able to do that, you know, in a safe way. You know, the problem is, Stephanie, is that when we get together, yeah, the problem is, is that you know, when we get together there, it's it's not just you know, if the restrictions are less than twenty five people, just on the floor at any given time could be one hundred and fifty people, and in this in the house, it's probably a few hundred. So um, the social distancing becomes a little bit difficult when, you know, you have the entire Senate there and their staffs, if we're still under those guidelines. Okay. Um, so GPAR, is there anything we can do to help in, you know, um, 
you know, in light of what's going on in Philadelphia, anything you need our help with? I mean, you know, again, I think that, you know, what, what happened, if you would have, if we would have had this, this call a week ago, Monday, um, we certainly would have had a different, you know, sort of a different discussion because we would have been literally talking about, um, you know, what is going to be your role in the opening of our, of this city and what is, and, and actually the Commonwealth as well, you know, what kind of, you know, what, what role do we see um, uh, GPAR playing right now? I think it's, um, you know, I think it's going to be a little bit, a little bit different because we're going to have to, you know, you know, getting people to come to the city, um, you know, to, to utilize and, and to patronize our services, our cultural institutions, our arts, um, you know, come down here to, to, to patronize our businesses, our restaurants. Um, you know, that's what makes the city, that's what drives our city. And we have a challenge right now in front of us to get, to get, to get our arms around that and to, to begin to, um, you know, make our city, you know, viable again for people to come back into. And so I think we have to deal with that at the first stage. I think we have to really begin to, uh, get our city ready to, to, to heal like that. Um, and I think you're going to play a, a big role in that um, in terms of how, how do we make our city, you know, we, we, we make people feel comfortable to come back in here again now and, and move here and, and, and raise their families here and, um, and get past this. And so I think this is a collective effort that all of us are going to play. I think each and every industry, bar owners, restaurant, hospitality, realtors, um, I think everybody has to come together and, and be able to market our city um, and, 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 and the things that we have here. And it's unprecedented on, on how we're going to go about doing that. Um, we have a lot of ideas about it, but I think it's going to be uh, the, next, the next few days are going to be very difficult for this city, I believe. Yes. Um, okay, so you're coming up on um, election. Yes. Tomorrow. Yes. So um, let's talk about what are your top three issues your campaign is prioritizing right now? Well, you know, one of the things, my top, my, one of my top priorities, if not our, our top priority, of course, is our funding for our, our education, our public education here in Philadelphia, um, clearly remediating the, the toxic and lead and, and toxic schools right now and ensuring that when our kids return to school and our teachers return, that not only do they have safe buildings to go back to, but that it's actually safe for them to go back. So um, public education funding is a real issue for us. Um, we were not able to make any increases in public education funding right now. At this point in the budget, um, many of us were, were, were disappointed with that because uh, last year, we, we, we knew that the, um, that the budget for a public education was not sufficient, especially here in Philadelphia. Um, and given what has happened with COVID and the, uh, and, and the toll that it has taken on the district and really on our economy, um, we believe that there was, there was additional resources that we need to go back into the school district, and we're going to continue to fight for that. Um, of course, number two, something that's always been a very special um, it's been very, very important to me um, is equality and fighting for equality um, for all people in Pennsylvania. We are, are still one of the few states in this country that allows legalized discrimination. We have people that can get married on a Saturday and go to work on Monday and get fired just for cause, just based upon who we love. I think that's bullshit, excuse my language. Um, and I want to end that in Pennsylvania. I've been working my ass off to do that. I'm going to continue to do that after I beat this guy tomorrow. Um, and so the third piece is, um, of course, as well, too, which is um, uh, economic development. I mean, we need to get, we need to get this, this state uh, back up again and running. Um, and I think we're going to have a lot of work ahead of us as well, too, on, on those. But those are some of my, my top priorities when I get, uh, after Tuesday, when I get back reelected. So, Senator Farnese, I think Stephanie's still having a little bit of challenges there with uh, technology. So I'm going to okay. jump in with some, some questions here. Uh, Thanks for your patience and understanding of this hopscotching back and forth between the two of us. Believe me, I, I can't even get my camera to work, guys. Believe me, I'm all... <laughs> I, I, my, my laptop had a meltdown uh, Thursday night into Friday morning. So uh, <laughs> there's something going on. Uh, the virus within the virus or something. I don't know. Um, I should Zoom stock. That's all I know. Is I yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, there was a vote a few weeks ago. Um, as it relates particularly to our industry, 
and we have to talk about this. Um, you know, ultimately, Governor Wolf on May 19th made real estate essential and allowed for uh, our folks to go back to work and help out clients uh, across the entire Commonwealth um, in a limited capacity, not business as usual, which was exactly what our state association and GPAR were pushing for um, in unison. Um, so there was that bill, House Bill 2412. Uh, we were pushing for that. Um, you happened to vote against that. We were wondering if you could give us a little bit of clarity as to yeah. why you took that position and what was the thought process behind it um, and how you got to, to making that vote. Yeah, that, I think a couple, of, and I did have some conversation with a, a couple of folks um, about that, uh, about my, about explaining why. So within the context of the, of that, of that vote, there was two bills that with one was the realtors piece. One was the telemedicine piece. All right. We had, po we had, we had, um, we had hundred percent support on both of those bills in my caucus. And in fact, Matt, we had passed the telemedicine bill two times in the state Senate and sent it over to the house. Um, unfortunately that week, um, both of those bills were amended. The telemed telemedicine bill was, was uh, amended to include a piece which basically made it prohibitive for women to access uh, reproductive services, specifically an abortion. They stuck that in the telemedicine bill. Uh, the governor uh, was upset with that and was going to veto that. And again, with the, uh, the, the realtor's bill, they had put in specific provisions um, one was a legal provision in there, which would have had the, um, the consequence of opening up law offices and law, law firms around the state um, without any kind of mitigation. And number two, the other, the other piece that was missing in there was any required mitigation um, in the bill. So there was a lot of amendments that were stuck in the bill that were not in there in the beginning that we, we did not want in the Senate, House and I mean, Republicans and Democrats didn't want those changes in there. Um, the governor made it clear he was going to read, that he was going to veto that. Before we ended that, we had a conference with the governor. Um, I, I and myself and some others got assurance from the governor that if he vetoed this bill, he would sit back down at the table and come to a, uh, a, a compromise so that the realtors could move forward. And as you know, that happened uh, shortly thereafter. Okay. We appreciate your, your honesty on that. Uh, clearly, um, the, it became a highly political operation, it sounds like, for sure. And oh, it, was all, it was 100%. There was yeah, no doubt it was political. It was all political. Yeah, kind this of drifting just, a little bit away from the substance and, yeah. and into like this back and forth. So looking at that, how does that get resolved out in Harrisburg? Because it seems just so divisive and it seems very difficult to kind of build consensus uh, across the aisle. What, how do we get out of that, that log jam there? Well, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, I could tell you that in the, in the Senate, I'm mean, at least personally, Matt, you know, I, I, and I understand your point. There are legislators in Philadelphia that spend their entire careers and they never gotten bills out. I mean, I, I mean I, I've been very fortunate in my career. I mean, I've gotten legislation out since I was a freshman. Um, uh, most recently, a couple of weeks ago with uh, our, our protected bike lane bill. But um, I think that, you know, the House has, has historically been, um, I think, a very divisive, uh, I think a divisive, divisive place, a little bit more collegiality in the Senate. Um, and I think the numbers are beginning to reflect that. Um, you know, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, we were 16 members in the state Senate. Uh, because of the work of myself and a few other um, senators, we got our numbers all the way up to 22. We lost one when um, Senator Dechak decided to become a Republican. But um, so I think that's, you know, when you ask me, how do we, how do we end the divisiveness? I think the, that we have a great way to end that divisiveness in, in a few months in November. And that is to, uh, to turn a lot of those seats from Republican to Democrat. Um, I think uh, something short of that, I think, is the, is, uh, is the fact that I think a lot of, um, I think a lot of your your uh, Republican areas right now that are up for re-election um, understand that it is in the best interest not only of those folks but I think the Commonwealth to work together. And I, you know, we have been able to get some bipartisan pieces done, um, especially with the budget and and, and during the COVID nineteen. But um, I'm going to tell you right now, it, it is it is really disingenuous and 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 frustrating when you work hard 
to get a, a bill that is accepted by both sides of the aisle. Um, you work in a compromised way and the bill goes over to the house and they stick something in there and it's complete bullshit and everything stops. And that's, that's the world I live in. And that's why, you know, I say that Harrisburg is different from Philly. It's, it's hand to hand combat up there. Experience matters, understanding how that place matters and being able to get things done in a very, in a very hostile environment at times. Um, you know, and we anticipate that. Uh, but I do think that moving forward, I think, um, you know, we're going to have to come together to handle the, the, uh, um, the challenges that are not just COVID-19, but, but what come from COVID-19 um, right now with the, the, the demonstration, the protests around the state, um, we're not, we're not going to have a choice but to come together and, and work, work together. So we have Councilman Dom uh, yes. here in the chat with us. Uh, Councilman, do you have any questions that you would like to throw towards uh, Senator Farnese? I just tell you how lucky I am to have the Councilman, not only at the City Council, but also as a part of our ward and, and as one of my supporters. And I want to just thank him. For yes, this. hi. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, hey, Senator. I think I can hear you. Te technology challenges abound. Yes, technology. <laughs> we are consistent today. <laughs> oh, no, the real is we can't get our <laughs> technology together. No, no. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Councilman, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. Is there any background noise or you're okay? No, we're, we're good. good. Go. Go. Fire away. Okay. So uh, I just want to make, you know, I said this earlier, Senator, that we really need to support you. Because you've been a great ally with me and very helpful. And uh, we need you up at the state representing the Philadelphia uh, in, in, in what we need accomplished. Um, I, have, I do have a question I'm going to ask, which might be a little sensitive. But I just, I'm just curious of everyone's thoughts, including your senator. You know, in, a, in the middle of a pandemic where you can't have a wedding for more than 10 people or you can't have a public event or go to a sporting event, we granted a permit for protest of over three, four, five hundred people. And my concern right now is what will this do to our numbers uh, of raising the potential of this, you know, coronavirus? I'm very concerned about that. What are your, what are your, and, then, and I've talked to my colleagues and they all said to me, well, you have to allow the right of people to protest. And I agree with that, but not maybe during a health pandemic. Well, you know, that's a good question because I just saw there were some numbers that came out of some states. I don't have them at the tip of my fingers, but um, leading up to this week, there was increases in, um, in, in, in cases that were coming up. And that was before the weekend of protests. So, um, you know, we're going to have to see what those numbers are. But I think it was a, um, I think you really, it's, it's very difficult right now <clears throat> to balance uh, what you're basically trying to do, which is balance someone's right to, um, to, to, to public demonstration and their right to free speech with the, the role of government, which is to protect people and keep them safe. Um, it's a very difficult spot right now. Uh, you know, what really, what really sort of is, is, is of a concern to me, Councilman, and maybe you guys have thought about this, that I, I believe that we knew that there was demonstrations planned, not just here in Philadelphia, but all across the country uh, throughout this, this weekend. I, I don't understand how we were not able to understand. It was not, you know, whether through the federal government or through, you know, investigations at the state level, the state, state troopers association, there would be, there would be you know, uh, insurgents embedded in within these protests that could turn them, could, could, could turn them into riots. I, I can't, you know, using that information is available. It's disseminated. Uh, you know, we saw that a few years ago with, with the riots down south, um, but people were prepared for that. Um, I just can't imagine there was no, there was no sharing of information through all the different states. You know, I, I and, you know, I am a Democrat, but I, I, I have voted against the governor. I've pointed the governor out and I want answers to that. I want to know why the hell we, you know, was there information shared from different states across this country about these protests? And was it, was it transferred that there could be a possibility of, of very peaceful protests then turning, turning into riots? And if that information was not disseminated, why wasn't it disseminated? And why would we give a, 
Why did they give the special permits knowing that there's that possibility there? I mean, we were we were not prepared. For that. We were just not prepared. For that. Um, I think we, we, I think um, uh, I think our police commissioner said that on Sunday um, that they were not prepared for this. So that you know that that concerns me. And, and to the councilman's point, you know, if we don't have that information, how the hell could we be given out um, permits? to have people protest where, I mean, I don't know, Councilman, I, I think there was a hell of a lot more than a few hundred people out there at any given time. Um, you know, and we're gonna see the effects now. We're gonna see what happens. Hopefully cases won't rise, but that's a concern. And that concern is not just about why the permit was, was not why the permit was given out, but what information did they rely upon when they issued that permit? That to me is also a question I wanted to answer for. Yeah, I mean, because really, when you think about it, I think health takes precedence over anything. Even I, I, my belief, I could be wrong, but even over protesting, like when you, I think health, I mean, especially with what this administration and, and the city has been talking about with health, how careful we had to be, this could just give us a dramatic rise in our numbers. It, it really could. And I think we're all, we're very, we're all very nervous about that. I mean, you know, the, the next few days to see what happens um, could be devastating. And it could, it could take this city from looking at making that move that we were talking about on the fourth. You know, I I really believe, and I I'll share this with you. Before what happened this weekend, I really believe, based upon my conversations with the governor, based upon my conversations with Secretary Levin, and my conversations with with Burnell, his chief of staff, um, that when we moved into that we were going to move into yellow. On, on Thursday, I guess it would have been Thursday, and that soon thereafter, we would be in green. That there would be a point in time in June when this city would move into green. I believe he was going to do that. I believe he was going to, whether it was going to be under the criteria that he had already been using, or somehow he was going to find a way to get us and anybody else into some type of a limited green or some type of a different color other than that yellow. Um, especially in light of the fact that he saw um, New Jersey moving forward, um, you know, and I know the governor down there is getting a lot of pressure from the shore communities. Um, I, I believe that's where we were headed. I really do. I, and I, I told people that. Um, I don't know if that's, if that's where we are right now. But I do, I did anticipate that we would see uh, another move from yellow to green probably within two weeks after June 4th. <clears throat> Right now, I just don't know. I mean, one of the comment, Senator, I mean, if there was a silver lining, which I hate to even say this, is that all the retail businesses that were looted, damaged, et cetera, now it is at a clear insurance claim. And many of that inventory that they had from the spring that wasn't selling, they can get fully claimed of their insurance. And on top of that, they can have a loss of sales now based on their policies. So right. while we hate to see this happen, we should make sure that message gets across to all the retailers. Right, and and as, you know, to the to the council's point. So I also sit. I'm a senior member on the uh, uh, banking and insurance committee. I started I started on that committee as a freshman, um, and we've already made um, we've already reached out to the insurance industry to begin discussions about that with their members and about about these potential claims that are going to be coming through. Um, they were re denying a lot of those claims before. Um, but now, like the councilman said, it's clearly a covered claim. So, uh, you know, we're hopefully we're going to be able to get coverage on that moving forward. That's important. Councilman and Senator Farnese, here's a quick question on the fly here. So we, we look at uh, the, the businesses that have been impacted across the city over this past weekend. Um, is there going to be any kind of uh, propping up of a, of a group to from the government to help those folks out, guide them along, um, kind of like a centralized thing, or is that uh, just a one off and they go forward uh, advocating on their own and, and doing whatever they have to do to get going? And I'm sorry, I missed the beginning of that. I'm, I'm, is, is there a way for uh, either the state or the local government to help out those businesses across the city that were impacted over the course of the weekend to help get them uh, propped up and, and, and running uh, maybe a little bit quicker than, than it would if they were kind of doing it uh, on their own individually. Yeah, I mean, at, at the state level, I mean, you know, the, you know, the usually uh, the, the availabilities for these types of um, uh, disaster relief funds, um, you know, would, would go into effect right now as soon as the, uh, a, a disaster is declared. 
Um, you know, the state, the city has already been in that probably that phase right now. Um, and so in terms of what I know the National Guard coming in um, and right now what we're trying to see is any type of, um, of, of funds available at the state level that can be diverted. Mm -hmm. into that. So that right now I'm looking at tapping into, um, we have a rainy day fund and a tobacco settlement fund that are actually sitting in basically, you know, they, they, where we go and we take out resources when we need it. We, we've used it to assist the school district um, in the past. Uh, many of us are, I'm actually looking in to be able to tap that right now to see if resources can be then driven out of these, uh, these, these business owners that basically have been devastated to see if those can be, can be in the, in the form of either grants um, or um, just basically, you know, either a loan or some type of a grant. Under the light. Yeah. That's at the state level, yeah. On the, uh, city, on the city level, I know that council member Sanchez, Parker, um, Green, Squilla, Clark, and myself are working on some ways of possibly deferring the requirements of some of the tax payments, not abating, but deferring to give businesses the ability to get jump started and defer some of these taxes that they'll be burdened with uh, coming out of this uh, event. But um, the main, you know, one of the main things we all need to do, and as, as real estate people, we need to do, we need to be positive. Because the biggest thing we can, biggest thing we can do is to keep the faith and be positive about our city and sell the city. Look what Ed Rendell did, turn, how he turned around the city with enthusiasm. We need to do the same. He's right. The councilman is right. I can't, I can't tell you. I mean, we, we touched upon that. Uh, you know, look, what drives this, this Commonwealth, you know, one of the big drivers is our, is our uh, hotel and um, restaurant um, visitors center. I mean, all that, all that is a huge economic driver in this city. And we have to get people to come back here. I mean, the, the challenge before this weekend was even when we went in the yellow and, and, and into green is to convince people that look, it is safe to go out to dinner. It is safe to go to the movies. It's safe to go to our, our, our shows and come back into the city and, and patronize our businesses. Um, we, we still have that challenge. We have another challenge like the, um, the councilman said right now, we have all got to stop. Uh, we have to stop talking about politics and be cheerleaders for the city. Uh, and, and encourage people to come in here. And I'm telling you, we, all of us are, po all politicians have their agendas. They have their, what they want to do. It's time to stop that, 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 that BS right now. We need to work together um, because we just can't, we can't sit there and have our own individual agendas when, you know, nobody wants to come into this city and nobody wants to come in and live here and stay here and raise families here. Um, we have to be focused on that as a, as a, and we have to, we have to do it as, as a unified body, both at the state and front, uh, local level. I totally agree. Thank you, Senator, for that. And, and Alan, you know, I'm the eternal optimist. So I'm, whatever programs you guys have, GPAR, our members, we are entrenched in our communities. We know business, um, we know the small businesses. So anything um, we're coming on the top of the hour and um, I, I want to thank the councilman for jumping in there and asking some really great questions and um, to the senator is there any last parting words for for our members that you'd like to say well, number one is I want to thank you for all of your support. Um, it has really been a, really been very uh, important to me, and I want to thank you for that. Um, I also want to thank you for your willingness, as the councilman said, um, to really come together and 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 be leaders in in getting our city and our and our Commonwealth back, uh, you know, back to whatever the new normal is. The, the the economic generators of this state are not going to function without folks like yourselves believing in the system, believing in in in, in that there's going to be a um, you know, there's going to be a recovery from this, um, and we have to work together. And, and I and I ask again for for your patience. I know it is hard. I know you're frustrated. I know you're upset. I can't imagine what it must be like. I don't. I'm not sitting here saying I know what it's like. I don't. I don't know what it's like to be in your shoes and your members' shoes. I would never would never think that. Um, but I can tell you that there are people that care very deeply about, about the city and about it, it, and about it moving forward. I know that the councilman is one of them. He cares very deeply. I, I as well. Um, you know, we're trying. We're trying very hard. 
Um, and, and as the councilman said, we're, we're, well, there's a lot of different competing interests here. So I ask uh, also for your, your patience as well and, and, and your willingness to communicate with me like we've, we've had those opportunities over the last several weeks to communicate. Um, you know, we may not always be on the same page at that moment, but the ability to have a clear line of communication, especially at a time like this is really important, especially to, to someone like me. So I appreciate that and hope for that moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Very lovely words. Thank you. Um, you know, realtors, we are, we can dig deep and pitch in and we're ready to go. We love our city. Um, you know, hopefully this is just a little blip on the radar and we're going to get back to business and um, get the city back on its feet and um, get rolling here. So um, just want to thank everyone. Just thank um alan um all the members and you know we'll be we'll be updating everybody and keeping you posted um so i want to thank everyone and i'm going to turn it over to to matt thanks for jumping in matt with my uh -huh. my it kept going in and out it's like you have unstable internet so thank you for that <laughs> We're all feeling a little unstable right now. It's just not the internet. Uh, all right, folks, thanks for jumping in today. Thanks for um, being here. Thank you to Senator Farnese. Thank you, Councilman Dom. Um, it's really wonderful that we're able to go ahead and get folks in uh, for conversations like this. Matt, also, can I also, Matt, real quick, can I just give ahead. a very thank to another, another special one of our folks. I, wanted, I, I don't know if Barbara Capozzi is on the line, but I want to just thank her for all of her hard work down here. I mean, she is probably one of the biggest biggest supporters of Philadelphia and, and, and are, you know, making moves back again. And so I want to thank her for all her hard work and, and her support too, if she's on. Thank you, Barbara. Took the words right out of my mouth because she has been very helpful to the chief park professional staff during the course of this pandemic. Um, she's a past president of our association. Um, she's very, very helpful to us and we appreciate her uh, optimism, her connectiveness and her willingness to go ahead and tell us, uh, really how she feels and it's uh, we're, we're very grateful for that um, yes, because there's, there's no guessing where barbara's coming from and i think no that's refreshing for sure because <laughs> sometimes you gotta you know you gotta read cryptic messages from some folks there's none of barbara that barbara. Nothing cryptic about her message god bless she's very she's very clear and decide and very 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 clear in her in her yeah. <laughs> we love clarity. barbara we love her <laughs> she's the best <laughs> All right. Very good, everyone. Hey, hey, Matt, this is Alan. Can I just say, sure. say a few last words? Go for it. I just want to make sure that we know that tomorrow's election day and make sure all of you, if you're in Senator Farnese's district, get out and vote for him. And if you're not, or you're, even if you are, call 25 people. We need him in Harrisburg. He's it's very important. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Councilman, for everything. Thank you. And speaking of the election, folks, 77% of normal polling places are not open tomorrow. So one, if you haven't chose, uh, chosen that option to vote via mail, make sure that you triple check where your polling place is going to be at tomorrow. Uh, we'll be sending out an email uh, reminding everybody about this. We did it over the weekend. We did it uh, in, the, in the lead up um, to, to this week. So make sure you double check on that um, because they're not, I know my polling place has moved very, very far from where it normally would be. So uh, make sure that you check where you have to go and make sure you take all the proper precautions um, to vote safely. Uh, you know, have your mask and, and whatever you have to do to make yourself feel safe and secure and be patient because it might take some time to do it in person. But remember, that's a, right that is very precious it's part of being involved um so do your part so thank you very much everyone have a great day take care be safe thank you Matt. thank you for thank Bye you everyone. very much thank you everyone all right thanks everyone thanks.